Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. My name's Craig. And my name's Reza. And this podcast is all about improving your English and taking it to the next level. Reza and I are going to help you improve your grammar, your vocabulary, your pronunciation and everything connected to learning the English language. This is episode 123, 123, and Reza and I are going to talk about the difference between all and everything. And we're also going to look at collocations with to fix, to manage, to make it, and figure out. It's been a while since we recorded Reza, so we've got some feedback from during the summer. How was your summer, by the way? I had a very pleasant summer. Um, I was actually working over the summer, but I went back to Ireland and was working there. So at least it was cooler than being in Spain. So I had a nice cool summer, I have to say. What were you doing? What were you working at? I was uh, teaching English, of course. I can't, I'm can't. hooked. I'm an addict. I can't give up. But I was uh, teaching academic English at Ulster University, where most of my students were Chinese. So mm -hmm. that, that's a nice change. Different, There are different challenges for, for Chinese students compared to Spanish speakers. Very that must have been quite a variety for you. Yeah, it's fascinating. So let's begin with a voice message we have, which we received during the summer from Helen Jimenez from Costa Rica. Here's Helen. <laughs> Hi, Craig. Good afternoon. My name is Helen Jimenez and I'm from Costa Rica. I'm an English teacher too. I want to say you thank you for everything that you do in manciondelingles.com because I use all the tools, all the, all the grammar tools that you have there. Thank you, Greg, and it's very nice to know about you. Bye. <laughs> Well, thank you, Helen. That was a very nice comment, wasn't it, Reza? Thank you very, very much, Helen. That's very nice of you. By the way, I've never been to Costa Rica. Have you, Craig? No, me neither. I'd love to go. I've heard some fantastic things about uh, Costa Rica, so one day I hope to visit. Me too. Although I've never been, one of my f most favourite things in all the world um, can be found in Costa Rica. You know what that is? Natural fruit juices? Mm, you're close. Pineapples? Pineapples. Really? That's your favourite fruit? I am a huge fan of pineapples. And Helen, Costa Rican pineapples are absolutely the best in the world. Is that where Del Monte comes from? Oh, yes. The man from Del Monte. He oh, said, yes. Okay. Do you remember there was an ad on TV years ago, Helen? The man from Del Monte, and he picked only the finest Costa Rican pineapples. And I've eaten pineapples from many countries. And I can tell you, Costa Rican are unbeatable. Unbeatable. And I love pineapples. <laughs> Me too. So if we if we do go to Costa Rica, Helen will be sure to get in touch to say hello to you. And uh, thank you for your comment about the grammar section. By the way, some of you listeners may or, or may not know that we do have a grammar section that is completely free at mansioningles.com. There's also grammar in our free courses, also on mansioningles.com. And if you would like a portable grammar reference for your phone, you can download a PDF from our store at store.mansioningles.net and it's €1.99. Our next piece of feedback comes from Ivan from Cuba. Reza, would you like to read it for us? So Ivan has written, Hi guys, I'm Ivan and I'm Cuban. That's why my situation here with the internet is kind of complicated, but I will always find a way to get your episodes. Thank you very much, Ivan. Thanks, Ivan. I wanted to say that you guys are great, and I believe truly in what you do. I'd like to ask you about the use of all and everything. And he very uh, uh, craftily finishes, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. And that was the correct use of all, Ivan. Well done. It's a, it's a good question, and it's not an easy question to answer, is it? But we're going to try. We're going to tell you everything we know about all and everything. We're going to tell you all of it that we know. <laughs> everything. A hundred percent of it, which is really what all and everything means, isn't it? A hundred percent of something or of a group? 
Yeah. We, we'd love to give you just a, an easy translation in Spanish and say, that's it, go and do that, no problem. But mm, it's a bit more complicated. Than you that. can't just say todo, can you? Could be todo or toda, could be todos, todas. Mm. Mm, it depends. Sometimes all is todos, sometimes everything's todos. It's kind of more complicated. So, where to begin? Let's divide them up and first look at all and when you can use all in English. Do you, okay. want to, do you want to jump in? All right. Well, uh, the word all, Ivan, is probably a bit trickier than the word everything. Uh, let's start with all going with nouns. Now, all goes with uncountable nouns or plural countable nouns. We'll give you a few examples. We could say, he ate all the food, all the the food. So the word food is an uncountable noun. That means there's there's no singular and plural. It never changes. So all goes with words like that. He had all the food, all the love, all the music, all the all the war, uncountable things. All the love in the world. Oh yes. Or what about this? These students are all my friends. So my friends plural s that's all plus a plural countable. So all uncountable or plural countable. Craig, what about um, uh, pronouns and all? What can you say about that? Well, um, I can give you some examples. We all love holidays. So all of us, we all love holidays. Um, it all seemed a bit strange from start to finish. They all came to see us. What about Craig and I love you all? So we love all of you, all of our listeners. We love you all. Ooh, ah, now, you, now you're getting into interesting territory. I said, Craig and I love you all. And Craig said, we love all of our listeners. Aha. So Craig used all with of. Right. So I said, Craig and I love you all. But I could have said, Craig and I love all of you. So what's the difference with if you describe the grammar in those two examples? Well, the first one, Craig and I love you all. So you is a pronoun plus all equals Craig and I love all of you. I can say all of plus a pronoun. But there is a little difference because if you say all of, then the pronoun must be in the object form. Mm -hmm. Now, it just so happens that you is the subject and the object form. But I could give uh, another example to demonstrate the difference. Do you remember we said earlier, we all love holidays? So we is a pronoun plus all. You could say all of us love holidays. So we all equals all of us. But us is the object form of we. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. Both right. are possible. But when you say all of, you must use the object form. We said, uh, or you said, it all seemed a bit strange from start to finish. It all, we could say all of it seemed a bit strange. Mm -hmm. you, you said earlier, they all came to see us. You could say all of them came to see us. They all, they is the subject form, but all of them, them is the object form. And they mean the same thing. Right. And you use all often with plural nouns, as I think you mentioned, all of the people in my village go to the pub. Right. Mm -hmm. Or you to, to have another example of what you said just now, they all go to the pub. Exactly. Or all of the people go to the pub. Mm -hmm. Same mm -hmm. meaning. Um, when do you use the word of and when do you not use the word of with all? That causes a lot of problems for my, for my students because it's, it's different in Spanish, a different structure. Well, um, what about this? I could say Craig's eaten all of the chocolate. Or I could say Craig's eaten all the chocolate, no of. They're both correct. Craig's eaten all of the chocolate or Craig's eaten all the chocolate. The word of there is optional. 
Mm -hmm. I'll give you another example. The listeners had heard all of my jokes before. Well, that's a true sentence. Isn't it? Very. Uh, I could leave out the word of and say the listeners had heard all my jokes before. The word of is optional. But, but that's not always the case. This is when it gets a bit tricky. Compare these sentences. Not all podcasts are popular. Up in there in English, uh, Conrad Craig is very popular, of course, but not all are that good. So not all podcasts are popular. Here, I'm not using the word the, and I'm not using the word of, because I'm talking about podcasts in general. Right. However, if I say not all of the podcasts are popular, not all of the the podcasts are popular, then I must be talking about specific podcasts. For example, maybe maybe our podcasts, not all the podcasts in the world, but Upper and Daring Glass Con Resin Craig's podcasts. But that's more connected to the rule of the article rather than the rule of, of all, right? Yes. So the rule is you can say all of plus a, a determiner. That means words like all of the, all of this, all of the, the those, all of my, mm -hmm. or just all. So we said Craig's eaten all the chocolate because the is a determiner. We can add the word of if we want. Craig's eaten all of the chocolate. Or the listeners had heard all my jokes before. My is a determiner. So we can add the word of. The listeners had heard all of my jokes. However, when I said not all podcasts are popular, all pod there's no determiner, no the, no my. So it's not the same to say not all of the podcasts. Uh, that's different. It's different. Right. Yeah. And I can't say of. I cannot say not all of podcasts. That's wrong. Not all of podcasts does not exist. You cannot say Is that. Is that a mistake that typical Spanish speaker would make? Yeah. Because of translation. Exactly. So you can say not all of the, of and the, of the podcasts, but you cannot say of podcasts. If you use of, you must use the or my or another determiner. That's a common mistake. Right. Why, why do we use all in these examples? All's well with me at the moment. All's well with me at the moment. Because you could also say everything is well with me at the moment. I just think because it sounds nice. Is it a fixed expression that yeah. doesn't really follow a rule necessarily? It's yeah. just something that's accepted? Yeah, I think there are there are many kind of just fixed expressions with all or everything. Can you think of any more? What about all that matters is that you improve your English? Okay. Todo lo que es importante. Mm -hmm. Is that how you translate it? All that matters, the only thing that matters, all that matters is that you improve your English. Yes. Well, I would say there's a rule for that. I would say that that's not a fixed expression. Mm -hmm. It's a rule. That's the meaning of all, meaning the only thing or nothing more. Right. I, If I said to you, all I ever wanted was for Berta to love me, all that I ever wanted. It means it's the only thing, nothing else, only that. So I wouldn't call that a fixed expression. I would say that, that that's a rule. When you mean nothing more or the only thing, you use the word all. You don't use the word everything. Do you remember that song, All That She Wants Is Another Baby? Exactly. That's the only thing all in the world. All that she wants is another baby. She's gone tomorrow. <laughs> Imagine you were being questioned by your girlfriend uh, who saw you with another woman uh, doing something you mm, suspicious, you could say, all we did was a friendly kiss on the cheek. Nothing more, I promise. All we did. There's that, nothing more. That's all that happened. Nothing more. Don't be suspicious. Don't think there was more than that. That's all we did. That's, that's, that's all that happened. That's a meaning of all. Everything would be wrong there. Also, all he wants now is to get a divorce. Yep. All I want now is to make more money. All I want now is to improve my English. That's right. all I want. Fixed expressions. Mm -hmm. And all often goes with that, as Reza mentioned. So all often goes with that. For example, 
all that she wants is another baby, or all that I need is a better level of English, for example. Right. <laughs> Shall we move on to everything? Yes, because、um, they're connected. You can't disconnect them. Because, for example, as you said, everything equals the same as all plus a relative clause.、Mm -hmm. uh, relative clause with that. So, if I said to you, Reza gave Berta everything, but she still wasn't satisfied, that means the same as Reza gave Berta all that he had. But she still wasn't satisfied. So the word "everything" can equal all plus a relative clause. That means all that. So everything, all that he had. Another example could be the bad businessman lost everything, or the bad businessman lost all he owned, or lost all that he owned. Again, that is optional.、Mm -hmm. So everything and all do more or less equal the same thing, but. The structure you use is different. You say all that, but you don't generally say everything that. Although people do in bad English, people do say he, the businessman, lost everything that he owned. People say that. Yeah, you do hear it, don't yeah, you? Yeah, but it's not really good English. It's more correct to say all that he owned. But you, you will hear people say everything plus that. You, you can hear it.、Mm -hmm. And everything is is usually used as a pronoun.、Um, everything is okay. I, I did some work, but I I didn't finish everything、um, because it kind of substitutes other things.、Uh, for example, I could say, yesterday I had to reply to emails, I had to make some、uh, images, I had to record a podcast, I had to phone my coworker, I had to post on Facebook, but I didn't have enough time, and I didn't do everything. So that everything is substituting all those things. Craig, tell me why might somebody say, "I saw you with your new boyfriend last night." Tell me all. Tell me everything is also right. Yeah, they both sound okay. Tell me all. Tell me everything. Why is the word "all" used there? Tell me everything that happened. Tell me all of it.、Mm -hmm. Right. You could use you could use either. Tell me all of it.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you can just say all. As well, yeah. Tell me all. I would say that it's to be dramatic. It sounds more dramatic or more、mm -hmm. literary.、Uh, it also sounds a little bit more old-fashioned, perhaps. Right. Can you imagine a newspaper headline? Imagine you know, a hundred years ago or one hundred and fifty years ago, ship sinks, all are dead, no survivors. Very、mm. sad story that would be. All are dead. That all means everybody. It does add like a certain drama to it, doesn't it?、Yeah. All hands lost is the way they used to say it. When ships sank, they used to say things like "all all hands lost." All hands means all people who work on the ship. A bit old fashioned, a bit dramatic. I、oh, think that's about all, isn't it? I think that's everything. Yeah. yeah. So thank you very much for for your question,、uh, Ivan, and I I hope we've we've answered it. If you have any more doubts or questions, then you know just send us an email. But I would advise you also to. Uh, check it out on the Mansion English because it's a complicated area, all and everything. I think I think you need to practice a bit more. Yeah, do、um, do a couple of exercises to reinforce to practice what we've just told you. Okay, and moving on, we have an email now from Carla, who is also from Costa Rica.、Uh, would you mind reading this email, Reza, from Carla? Another one from Costa Rica. I can't help thinking about pineapples now. I'm getting really hungry.、Um, <laughs> Your pineapples on the no, brain. Yeah, I love them. Okay, she writes. I just wanted to thank you for this excellent tool that allows me to practice and improve my English. I am going to start a new job, having interaction with people from different countries in Europe. Congratulations! Well done, Carla. So I was concerned about accents and slang words.、Hmm. Oh, I understand. As any language, I think it is about learning through daily interaction, right? Any advice? Thanks again.、Hmm, good question. 
Yep. Um, what can we, what advice can we give to Carla? Well, um, as far as accents are concerned and speaking with people uh, with different regional accents, obviously the best way you can, you can practice and improve is by speaking. We do recommend italki, which is an internet platform to find a language teacher online. And disclaimer here, it, italki are a sponsor of this podcast, so they do pay us to recommend them. But we also believe in their service and we think they're very, very useful. And for... what accents do they use on italki? Well, right? the good thing about italki is that you can change from one teacher to another teacher. So you just go to the italki website and you can try an American accent, you can try an Australian accent, you can try different regional accents inside particular countries, and you can have one lesson with one teacher, another lesson with another teacher. You can ask the teacher to teach you grammar and vocabulary, or you can just have like a conversation um, class with the teacher, and then they will correct you if you make any mistakes. So the good thing about italki is that you can have different teachers each time, uh, every week a different accent. Um, if you can't afford to pay for a lesson, then there are places online where you can have language exchanges or maybe somewhere locally where you live. You can find a pub or a bar and go there and speak to people face to face. Maybe you teach them a little Spanish. They teach you a little English. That's another way to practice your, your English and talk to different people, get used to their accents, get used to the way they speak. Any other uh, advice, Reza? Well, um, Carla, I appreciate for you living in Costa Rica, it's a bit harder. Uh, but for those people who live in Europe, say Spain or, or anywhere in Europe, actually, um, my advice would be, if you can, visit places uh, with different accents. Because uh, the southeast of England compared to the north of England, compared to Wales, compared to Scotland, compared to Northern Ireland, compared to the Republic of Ireland, they're all very different accents. Go to those places, go there, speak to people, listen to people, and you'll hear the accents. Sadly, it's not the same case for America because there aren't, there isn't such a variety of accents in, in North America. But in Europe, you've got a great opportunity to practice. If you can understand me and Craig, by the way, well done. Already a good start because my accent is from Northern Ireland and Craig is has a, a typical kind of accent of the southeast of England. So we have different accents. We do, but to be fair, we're also teachers. And I think because we're teachers, we tend to speak with a little more consideration for the listener. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we speak a little, a little more slowly. We choose our words Maybe we don't use it as much slang or colloquialisms as a native speaker might. So, yeah, it's true. We have accents, but we're also used to speaking to, to people who are learning English. You could, to improve your listening, um, Carla, you could listen to podcasts about something you like. So I don't know how you're listening to this podcast. If you're listening to this podcast on the internet, go to Google and just type in your hobby. And then the word podcast, for example, swimming podcast, tennis podcast, movie podcast, um, Irish music podcast, whatever your hobby is, search for a podcast and then listen to English people with different accents speaking about your hobby. Or you could listen to TV series um, either on the internet, on YouTube or on your TV. Many TVs now have um, subtitles in English, so you could be listening in English and reading the subtitles. And there are many TV series with different accents so that you can practice your listening with those. And if you're interested in Lessons with italki, uh, we remind you that they do sponsor this podcast, but they are offering a free lesson. So if you're interested, Carla or anybody who'd like to improve their English with a private teacher, go to englespodcast.com dot com slash italki to find out more information. We want to say thank you to italki for sponsoring this podcast up in dead English. Conreza e Craig. We have more feedback from our old friend Mamin up in the Pyrenees. How are you, Mamin? Hi, Mamin. Uh, she's up in Biescas and Huesca. And she writes, Hi guys, thank you so much for keeping working on your podcast so hard during the summer. We all appreciate your big effort. 
Ah, we have a slight confession to make, uh, <laughs> Mammon. Uh, yes, uh, we we have released podcasts throughout the summer, but we recorded them at the start of the summer and then released them every week. Isn't technology amazing that you can do that? But we did work very hard to record them before you left. Oh yeah, for Belfast. We, we met every day for about for about five days to get them all recorded before the summer. So I was I was hard. sick of the sight of Reza by the time we finished that. <laughs> <laughs> joking, joking. But uh, thanks anyway, um, Amin. She goes on. This podcast has been so useful because you get me the opportunity. I think you mean you give me. You give me the opportunity to learn and improve every day. I wonder if you could help me with some issues that I always have. Okay. Please, could you explain the difference between fix, manage, figure out, and make it? Hmm, that's interesting. Mm, good question. I've heard these verbs in so many situations and it's a bit confusing. Thank you so much. Hope you could manage or whatever with the hot summer. Ah, you used the word manage. Well done. Yes, mm. uh, we could manage. We, we, we managed fine. That means we, we coped. The only reason I managed, Mammon, with the hot summer was because of my air conditioning. That's the um. only reason I managed. Otherwise, I will be sweating mm. Oh, it was hot during the summer, but we did manage because of fans, ventiladores, and the air conditioning. So we managed. My solution was much more extreme, but works. Go to Ireland. <laughs> and there's no problem with heat. That's what I did. How did you manage with the rain? Oh, that's another story, yes. But at least it wasn't too hot. Okay, shall we get down to business then? Yes, well, so let's look at okay. fix first. Fix. So you could fix a problem, fix uh, something that's broken. Um, you can also fix a time. So fix can mean to mend or to repair, which in Spanish is arreglar o reparar. For example, I took my broken watch to the watchmaker to have it fixed. Can you think of another example? Well, I can think of an example with... Um to fix a, a problem, this company is losing money and we better fix it soon before it's too late. A business person might say. Good we example. better fix it soon. There's a problem needs fixing. My sister came to stay and we don't usually use our ceiling fan. We've got a fan in the ceiling. So I turned it on, but it, I couldn't turn it off. There was a problem with it. So I had to cut the wire and disconnect the, the ceiling fan wire. So now the ceiling fan isn't working. True story. So I'll fix, I need to fix the ceiling fan. I need to repair it. You can also attach something with the word fix. If you attach a piece of paper to the wall, for example, you can say, I'll fix this piece of paper to the wall. Would you say that? Or is that more American? No, I would say that. I would yeah. say Let that Let me too. fix it to the wall. Let me attach it to the wall. Yeah. Any more examples? Yes, you can fix other things. You can fix a price. Uh, for example, we fixed the price of our first certificate course download at 17 euros. What a bargain. That's cheap. Download it on our store at mansioningless.com. 17 euros. We fixed the price at 17 euros. You can also fix a time. Uh, for example, we have to fix a time tomorrow for our meeting. To, in other words, to arrange a time, to fix a time. Mm -hmm. To decide on a time, yeah. What other things can you fix, Craig? It's more of an American expression, but you can fix food. If someone says, let me fix you a sandwich, that's um, to make you or prepare food for you. Can I, can I fix you something to eat? Well, there's an old, kind of old-fashioned American expression, but I really like it because it makes me think of 1950s and 60s films of glamorous Hollywood people. Say, can I fix you a drink? Yeah, people, people Humphrey, used to, Humphrey Bogart. Yeah, people yeah. used to fix you a drink. Then, but I think that's become a bit old-fashioned. But I kind of like it, the idea of fixing you a drink. Yeah. You know? It's always going to have ice in it and something nice. It's going to be, you know, a mojito or a, or a cocktail or something like that. But it is quite American, so it, it kind of, I think, well, maybe, is the, what's, what, is the drink broken? Why are you trying to fix it? Is it? it? What's yeah. wrong with the drink? Yeah. Let me fix it. Or something's not right with it. Something's wrong. But yeah, you can fix a drink. You can fix food which is more of an American expression for to make. You can also say, fix your eyes on this, which means put your attention on this. Mm -hmm. Fix your eyes on this for a second. 
Now, um, in sport, unfortunately, sometimes things are fixed. That's not good in sport. That means uh, there's been cheating. For example, uh, the boxing match was fixed, as anybody knows, and watched the Olympics and saw how the Irish boxer was cheated by the Russian in the Olympics. Terrible story. Do you think it was fixed? Oh, yeah. Very much so. They bought the referee. Yeah. Oh, it was a big story in Ireland over the summer. It was definitely fixed. Mm -hmm. We we couldn't believe it. It was fixed. It was um, arranged so that the result was a foregone conclusion. In other words, it was decided before it happened. So you can fix a game, you can fix a boxing match, you can fix an election. Mm -hmm. Arreglar in Spanish. Arreglar or maybe amañar. Is that a word as well? I think amañar kind of fix it in a suspicious way. (laughs) Moving on to manage... To direct or to be able to. Um, for example, you can organize with manage, dirigir or manejar or gestionar. For example, for example, Henry manages a small family business. Which is dirigir, I think. Mm-hmm. When my sister worked in the UK, she managed a small team of four office clerks. So she had four people working under her. She managed a small team of workers. Another meaning of of manage is to be able to do something. For example, how do state school teachers manage a class of 30 or 40 kids? Do you know, I have no idea how they manage. I mean, we have classes of 14 or 16 students at the most. Mm -hmm. How do teachers in schools manage a class of 30 or 40 children? It seems impossible to me. I don't know how they do it. So in this meaning of manage, it's more to control. How do they, how do they control their uh, pupils? How can they control the position, the situation? There's another meaning of manage, which is arreglarse, to get by or to survive. For example, I don't know how single parents can manage if they're looking after children. I don't know how they manage the expenses uh, and the cost of uh, raising a family if they don't have su- the support of, of a husband or, or a wife. So you get single parents, families managing on very little money. Another one we could say is, can you manage to get there by one o'clock? Uh, in other words, can you, can you do it? Can you succeed or are you able to do it? Or what about, it's difficult to release a podcast every single week, but we manage. We manage it. We, we succeed. We manage to release a podcast every Sunday, which will be conseguir or lograr, to manage, to succeed in doing something. Moving on to figure out. You can figure out a puzzle. You can figure out a solution to a problem, for example. So one meaning of figure out is resolver or solucionar, to solve something. For example, you could say today's crossword in the newspaper is too hard to figure out. It's too hard or too difficult to solve. Um, It's always been difficult for me to figure out maths problems. In English, I think you'd probably say work out. I think figure out for this meaning is more American. Like, uh, oh, I can't work it out. I can't um, solve it. Where I think an American would say, I can't figure it out. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely more American. Can you think of another use of figure out? Um, yes, to find a solution to, to a situation or problem. For example, they lost their home to the bank and had to figure out what to do next. Well, this isn't a puzzle. It's a, it's a difficult life situation. So you try and figure out things. That means, uh, overcome difficulties, find solutions to problems. And it can also mean understand, comprender. I finally figured out why my ceiling fan (laughs) wouldn't stop. So I finally found the answer. I understood it. Um, You could say, I I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't understand it. Or in more British English, I couldn't work it out. I couldn't understand it. So that's figure out, Mammon. There was one more thing you asked, Mammon. It was make it. 
make it. I, I presume you specifically want to know about make it because the word make on its own is something different, but make it is a very particular meaning or has particular meanings uh, like kind of attend or come, arrive or get to the end of something, survive, that type of thing. Can, can you think of any examples, Craig? Well, in the idea of succeeding, to make it, um, llegar a lo más alto o triunfar, an example would be when you win an award for your podcast, <laughs> you know you've finally made it. Ya has conseguido, ya has llegado ahí lo más alto. So to make it is to, to succeed in something. I didn't think I would ever be successful, but then I realized I had made it. Is there any other use of make it? Oh, yeah, a few more. Yep. Uh, for example, if uh, if you were a bit bossy and you were to say to someone, bring me a cup of tea and make it snappy or <laughs> make it quick. Snappy means quick. Make it snappy. Make it quick. This make it plus quick or snappy or something like that means uh, make sure you do it. Yeah, don't don't get it wrong. Do do as I say and don't make any mistakes. <laughs> make it quick. Yeah. You could also use make it in the sense of arriving on time for somewhere. For example, I'm having a party tomorrow night. I hope you can make it. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean on time, though, does it? Just I hope you can make it just means I, I hope you can come. I hope you can be there. Right. Yeah. But not I, necessarily on time. Just can, can you can you make it? Yes or no? You know what I mean? Or this example is probably clearer. I thought I was going to miss the beginning of the film, but I made it. Mm -hmm. He llegado con tiempo. Right. Mm -hmm. So it can mean just to come in general or, or arrive, or it can mean specifically to arrive on time. Yeah. It can mean either, depending on the context. We got lost on our way to Peter's house. We made it as far as the park. That means uh, we succeeded up to that point, but mm -hmm. no more. Up to that point, yeah. That's, that's, where we, that's where we got to. What about this? Imagine we're soldiers and I say to you, listen to me. Your captain, men. This is going to be a hard battle. Not all of you will make it. Very sad. In other words, not all of you will survive. Some mm -hmm. of you are going to die. You won't make it. You won't survive. So thank you for your question, Mamin. If you have any more, don't hesitate in sending us an email again. We have a voice message now from Anna from Mexico. Um, always nice to hear from our listeners in Mexico. This message from Anna is not very clear. The audio is not very clear. But um, even though it's not easy to understand, I think if Anna took the time to record it, we want to play it in the podcast. So I hope you can understand something from Anna's message. Hi, Rosa. Hi, Craig. My name is Anna from Mexico. I'm also the winner of the Speakers Mobile. And I want to say thank you for not only for the prize, for your time and effort to make the podcast every week, um, sharing your experience and knowledge. I listen and podcast for more than a year, and I have this feeling like I know you. <laughs> well, that's all for now. Um, well, thank you very much, Anna, for your message. It was a little difficult to understand. Anna thanked us for the podcast and thanked us for sharing our experience and knowledge. Um, and I think she said at the end that she has the feeling that she knows us, which was a really nice thing to say. Thanks, Anna. Thank you very much. Um, please remember, if you are sending us, if you do send us an audio message, please make sure that it's as clear as possible. I do try to clean the audio up before we put it in the podcast, but it really, really helps if you can make it as clear as possible. Um, and remember, you can send us audio message at speakpipe.com slash English podcast. And now it's your turn to practice your English. If you have a question or an idea for a future episode, anything you'd like to ask us about English, send us a voice message or an email to me, craig at inglespodcast.com 
or to me, Reza, at BelfastReza at gmail.com. And before we leave you, we'd like to say thank you, especially to Carlos Garrido, who has become our latest patron sponsor. So thank you, Carlos. We are lucky to have wonderful sponsors who are paying us a dollar or two every month to try and get to $100, which will enable us to pay for full transcripts to this podcast. And could you read our list of podcast supporters? Yes, many thanks to Lara Arlem, Carlos Garrido, Zara Heath Picasso, Mamen, Juan Leva Galera, Sara Jarabo, Corey Finneran from the Ivy Envy podcast, Manuel Garcia Betegon, Jorge Jimenez, Raul Lopez, Rafael, Daniel Contreras, Alatro, and Manuel Tarazona. I think that's everyone, is it? Yep, that's it. Thank you all of you for sponsoring us and thank you for listening to another and thank you for listening to another Inglés podcast. Until next week when we will be speaking about how not to repeat yourself in English. So until next week in which we'll be speaking about how not to repeat <laughs> yourself in English, it's goodbye from me. And to quote Bugs Bunny, that's all folks. See you later. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. How do public school teachers manage to a class of 34 kids? How are they able to do it? 30, 30, 34? 30 or 40. 30, 34, is it? 32, 30 or 40? Start, start again. Start again. Uh, Moving on, we have another email from Carla, who's also from... Not another email from Carla. Not another email from Carla. Okay, but you said, another email from Carla. That's, oh, okay, that's okay, what okay, I heard. Okay. <laughs> okay, start again. <laughs>